By now, it should be obvious that America's containment of China just won't work. The grand plan, as we all know, is to curb Beijing's tech advancement and throw them back into the Stone Age. However, that is impossible. Even in technology, the majority of inputs around the world are still sourced in China. They are too critical in the entire global supply chain. A month ago, ASML CEO dropped the bombshell that every supply chain manager and industry leader needed to hear. The Dutch chipmaker giant admitted that Europe can't even cover half of their own semiconductor needs. Chinese chipmakers are increasing capacity by 14% in 2025. Their production increase is twice the pace of the rest of the world. Whether you're making fighter jets, refrigerators, or even electric vehicles, you need Chinese legacy chips. There's no other alternative. Chinese chips represent a third of global production. So if you are a company selling chip makers, you know who your biggest customer is. Complying with US sanctions is just crazy. You will, of course, push back. China is your biggest market. And that's why this latest report shouldn't come as a surprise. Tokyo Electron, which is Japan's chip maker giant, keeps selling to China. Sales are expanding despite what the Biden White House wants. Let's look at reality. The company knows where their bread is being buttered. Operating profit for the full year is up by 8% and here's why. Strong growth due to investments in mature generation of semiconductors in China. In other words, companies in China like SMIC are investing heavily in legacy chips. And this big acceleration is helping Tokyo Electron. This isn't just about the AI boom. The story is more about Japan benefiting from China's semiconductor push. Remember the business Tokyo Electron is in. They sell chip-making machinery needed to make semiconductors. They cover the entire production chain including deposition, lithography, and packaging. If you need to make a chip wafer, you need these machines. And China needs a ton of this gear to make their legacy chips. US sanctions are forcing China to double down and accelerate their own production. And this is great for Tokyo Electron. Their sales are going to go through the roof. China is the world leader, but they are still going to expand production capacity. By 2026, China will be building out 26 new facilities to churn out 200 and 300 millimeter chips. More than Taiwan, the US, Japan, or even Southeast Asia. Tokyo Electron relies on the legacy chip industry to keep growing. Getting cut away from China will create the entire business model. If we dive deeper into the report, we can see a glaring reason why decoupling with China is a bad move. Orders from the US tech giant Intel are declining, making Tokyo Electron more reliant on China. And this is quite weird. Intel has won billions of dollars from the Biden Chips Act. The grant was meant for the company to expand their chip production, but it seems that that was wasted money. Intel is cutting 15,000 jobs and they posted over a billion dollar loss just months after getting the money. The US banning Intel's chip sales to Chinese companies also kind of contributed to that. In 2023, China accounted for 26% of Intel's revenue and that's almost $15 billion. However, because of the chip wars, Beijing is pushing for local chips in their computer systems. For Japan, the writing is on the wall, it's clear as day. Legacy chip production in China will increase, while companies like Intel will lose revenue and market share. Chip making demand will grow in Beijing and shrink in the US. The next two charts tells us where the future demand of semiconductors will be. The rich is all about Nvidia and AI chips, we all know, but we mustn't forget about the here and now. According to McKinsey, the demand for chips in the auto industry will be tremendous. By 2030, this market alone will hit nearly $150 billion. Whether it's in the battery, the powertrain, or the automated driving systems, you need chips. Even the infotainment devices and all the systems, they need semiconductors as well. So in 5 years, the market for chips in cars is going to double quite easily. And if that's the case, who has the biggest market for cars? Who is producing the most EVs as well? The answer once again circles back to China. It's not a conspiracy or fantasy. 
is simply the data speaking to us. Thanks to the chip wars, China will bring more of their production in-house. The Chinese government told BYD and NIO to support local brands. Stop importing from Intel, Qualcomm and AMD. Ironically, Beijing agrees with all the US sanctions. And that's going to cripple the demand for Western chips over the next few years. By 2027, China will lead the world in demand for electric vehicles. Over 16 million EVs will be sold in the country. To make an EV, you need thousands of semiconductors. Local chip production is going to experience a serious boom that will blow out any other Western company. They'll lose over half of the entire market for car chips. So whether it's the new Huawei phone or EV model from BYD, chips are needed. And these chips will be made locally. Tokyo Electron can't possibly give up their Chinese business. It's their cash cow. Semiconductors are important, but energy is even more critical. Everyone knows that China is the world's factory. A big part of that is the expertise and of course, the integrated supply chain. But to build those out, China needed a lot of cheap energy. And this advantage is something that Beijing mustn't let go of. To ensure China's energy stays cheap and abundant, Beijing is doubling down on nuclear power. And the West is finally, finally starting to notice and they are freaking out. Bloomberg reports, China is rapidly building the nuclear power plant as the rest of the world stalls. Now this sums things up perfectly. While Germany decommissioned their nuclear plants and the US stopped building, China is powering ahead. The US and France are currently the leaders in nuclear power capacity. The US has nearly 100 gigawatts, while France comes in at 91. But China is going to leapfrog ahead by 2030 in just 5 years time. That's very close. They will reach 81 gigawatts of nuclear capacity, putting them just behind the US. This is a very important milestone. China is diversifying their energy mix and their answer is nuclear power. Importing oil and gas leaves you vulnerable to geopolitical risks. Supply can always be blocked, especially crude coming from the Middle East. Just look what's happening today. Solar power isn't always reliable either. If you have PV panels installed, you kind of know what I mean, right? Power is intermittent and it's not exactly on demand. Nuclear power for China is cheap and plentiful. And thanks to government support, the cost of power generation is very low compared to the G7. Beijing can generate 1 megawatt hour at $70. In the US, it will cost over 100 bucks. And in the EU, it's simply crazy. Nuclear power is $160 per unit in Europe. So on a cost basis, China has the West beat. Cheap and reliable energy is critical for Chinese manufacturing. But this begs a very big question, why is China ahead of the game? The US and France started first, that's obvious. But how is Beijing catching up? According to the Hamlin Center, it all has to do with China's ecosystem. It's the same playbook Beijing used for EVs and semiconductors. The Chinese government provides extensive financing and the industry builds out its own supply chain. However, the US doesn't have the same support. You have big oil, which is dominating the landscape. The oil companies have all their lobbies at the ready. The Green New Deal that is promised more renewable energy is still limbo as well. China is very different. They don't really care about corporate interests. It's a top-down approach led by the government, which in this case is helping to push out their nuclear ambitions ahead. If we look at US nuclear generation, there's a glaring problem here. Since 1990, the capacity hasn't increased. It is stagnant at 100,000 megawatts or 100 gigawatts. Generation has increased over the next two decades, but it peaked out in 2007. It's as if America simply gave up on nuclear power, and the alarm bells are finally starting to sound. Nuclear, I think, is, is critical, not again for uh, proliferation, but nuclear reactors. I don't think people really appreciate this. And I know, as I said earlier, we speak about AI and biotech and quantum. I think a vector or spotlight should be on nuclear because I think it's really serious. And here's why. U.S. went from 104 to 93 reactors. We're down 10%. China went from 2 to 25 to 55, and they're on their way to 150. 5% of their electricity is produced by nuclear. It'll be 20, which approaches ours, but it'll be a much larger population. 
The Georgia plant that was done in nuclear here in the U.S. recently, $25 billion. That's about $11.5, $12 billion or so per gigawatt. China is producing nuclear for $2 billion a gigawatt. So that's a huge contrast. If you're a foreign country, China could easily come in and say, we will build it for you, we'll finance it for you, and then, by the way, we've got you hooked for the next few decades on dependency on fuel and maintenance, etc. The issue in the U.S. once again boils down to cost and the way they build the nuclear plants themselves. America prefers big, massive projects like the Hoover Dam, but this runs into two big issues. You probably underestimate the cost needed and this will take forever to commission the plant. The Georgia nuclear plant, for example, arrived seven years late and $17 billion over budget. And because of that, US nuclear ambitions probably ended that exact same day. China's approach, however, is quite different. They are focusing on small modular reactors that can be built fast and scale across the entire country. It's practical and because of government help, they have made it cost competitive and that's the key here. If I was the G7, I would be sweating because China has essentially cornered the future of nuclear energy. And with cheap abundant energy, you can essentially build out any industry you want. Aviation, maritime and semiconductors, all these run on affordable energy inputs. A study by the ITIF places China 10 to 15 years ahead of the US in nuclear energy. And this is an American institute telling us Beijing is the world leader today. Chinese scientists are learning by doing. The rapid deployment of small modular reactors allows them to innovate faster than building one gigantic nuclear plant. Because of this, China is able to leapfrog ahead with incredible innovations. And this will allow them to scale fast and build nuclear plants almost anywhere going forward. If we look at China's nuclear power plant deployments, we can see two patterns here. The first are the red dots, which represent existing plants already in operation. These plants are located near coastal areas and cities of China. This includes Changjiang, Fuqing, and Ningde, all along the east coast. And it kind of makes sense. You need lots of water to cool the plant, so locating it near rivers or even by the sea is necessary. But the yellow dots are plant facilities and they are being built closer inland. This is big. Thanks to China's 10-year advantage, they have managed to build plants that doesn't really need water for cooling. So Chinese nuclear reactors can be built across the country without the worry of having a water source. The odds of a core meltdown in these plants are also much lower. This changes everything and it's not an overstatement. Beijing can now scale up their power generation across the country using nuclear fuel. No need for oil and gas or even solar power. And it gets crazier. China plans to start building the world's first molten salt nuclear plant in the Gobi Desert in the desert. In this case, thorium is used as the fuel instead of uranium. It's a much more abundant input, it's safer and produces less waste than conventional nuclear fuel. What's crazy is that the US and Europe already knows about the technology since the 1970s or the 1980s. But it is China that's putting the technology into practice. China is taking their industrial push very seriously here. Nuclear reactors spread across the country allows China to be less reliant on energy imports. It helps sanction-proof their economy. So we must be very careful about the China collapse theory. While it's true the West is trying desperately to decouple with Beijing, it's just not possible. But let me know what you think. Will Tokyo Electron keep selling to China? And can the G7 ever catch up in nuclear technology? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.